Let church say amen. amen. Let church say amen again. Amen. I stand before you giving all praise to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of my faith, and to the angel of this house, Pastor Harold, and in his absence, and First Lady Martha, and the family, amen, and giving honor to every minister and every deacon, every Gideon, every yoke fellow, every trustee, amen, and all you beautiful people here. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. There's a big difference when you can see people, amen. There's nothing wrong with Zooms, nothing wrong with live streaming, amen, but it's, you just get to feel the aura of people, amen. And that's a, a good feeling, amen. And for those of you who have your Bibles uh, here and on live streaming, uh, would you please stand and in your standing turn to the 19th number of Psalms, the 14th stanza, and then hold your finger there and go over to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, the 22nd verse, going to the 25th verse. And if you're there, uh, say amen. And if you're not there, just say wait. Amen. And I'll say I was trained being in the military that we leave nobody behind. Amen. So we got to take this journey together. Amen. The 19th number of songs for your hearing. 14th stanza reads, Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be wholly acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 22nd verse to the 25th verse. And it reads thusly, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure hope, with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And 25, not forsaking the symbol of ourselves, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as we see the day approaching. Father God, we thank you for the time. You may be seated. Thank you. We thank you for this time and this hour, O oh God. And Father God, I pray that some might be said that touch hearts and lives, O oh God. And I ask you, O oh God, that you allow the Holy Spirit to stand up and allow William to sit down. And let it speak to me, through me, and for me, O oh God. Anoint these lips of clay, O oh God. And so I can say something that a dying world can come to Jesus to Christ. This is my prayer. Amen. Amen. For those of you who want to topic or title to put your proverbial spiritual hat on. It's in these wise critical tips for critical times. Christian tips for critical times. Times are critical, amen? It really is. And I'll say amen for you because I don't know about you, but it's been tough business. Amen. Most of us might be a few in here, but most of us have never faced an economic crisis like we're in right now, amen? Millions of jobs have been lost. Maybe if somebody here and somebody watching, many of them jobs have been lost, amen? And I know it hits my family because my son were laid off, amen, during this pan pandemic time. Um, and every business, I don't know about other places, but I believe it be so every business and in this town seems to be either at a standstill 
or a downward slide. Some are trying to open. And some businesses in this town could not adjust and have to close their doors. That's, that's, that's sad news. And when you have to shut your doors, you have a business, and you have, you have to shut it down. And those who are in the know have no clue how bad it's going to get. Because while this has been cooking for some time, it has only reached its boiling point over the past few months. And I start by to tell you that if one of you would have told Will Ferguson this time last year that you need to get ready because when 2020 comes, you're going to have some problems. I would have gave you the yeah right. To make matters worse, it came on without warning. Like a thief in the night, part of the parallel. There was no time for preparation. No time to put a few dollars away for a rainy day. No time to downsize our budgets and hoard up canned goods like they did the days of the 30s depression. For a lot of us, we didn't have time to do those things. A social climate like this wears a person out. I don't know about you, but it, it wears on me. Uh, listening to daily about a pandemic, listen to about civil unrest, listen to people uh, not having food and not be able to, to maintain and keep a job, amen, and, and, and how the economy is struggling, amen. Uh, and if you don't realize that maybe we need to open our eyes because it's tough right now, amen? And, and, and we spend a lot of our time conjuring up survival techniques. We spend so much time worrying about how we're going to fix it that we run the danger of forgetting who has the power to fix it. And that's Jesus the Christ. Only Jesus can fix what's going on right now. Amen? So, so let's go over a few Christian tips for these critical times. And I pray not to be before you long, but don't know how long the Holy Spirit is uh, going to be before you. I'm not that long-winded guy. Amen. Uh, I believe in just give you the points and then have my seat. Number one, draw near to God. Hebrews 10.22 says, let's draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. This is not the time to put our faith on hold, amen? Somewhere I read, they asked this young man, how do you lose your faith? I didn't lose it, he said. I just put it away in a drawer when I didn't need it. And when I went back to get it, it was gone. Let us not be like this young man, young woman, little boy, little girl, who lost the only thing of value in a crumbling economy. Hold fast to God. James 4 and 8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. If our worship feels like a tired friendship, now is acceptable time to revive it. Amen? Let's look for ways to reunite our faith flame. Attend Bible study. A lot of you in this church have already attended Bible study. You use Zoom, and that, that's a great. And, 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 and getting the family to, together, spend time with learning God's survival techniques. And, and I want to say this, uh, um, trying to get my family to go to church uh, uh, since I've been saved was a task, but because of the pandemic, church came to them. Amen? And so they, they, they chime in and they listen to the word of the go Lord, which is, which is good. And there's some good coming out of this. And, and uh, uh, God is reaching a lot of people because of this. Amen? God is going in the homes that never heard the word of God. God is going out, amen, out of these four walls, amen. We may have tens and we may have hundreds, but because of this, we're getting to reach thousands upon thousands and possibly even millions of getting to hear the word of God, amen. And that's good news, amen. Amen. 
Hold fast to God. That's one of the key things. Hold fast to God. Begin each day with prayer. Amen. And it's important to wake up each morning thanking God, praising God, because we know tomorrow's not promised. When we walk out this door, it's not promised. Ask God to sustain you and cause you to prosper, even in this recession. Then pray with your children, for those who have little children, even your grown children. Uh, uh, pray with them. Uh, they feel uh, uh, the strain and the pain too, amen? They may not say nothing, may not wrap their mind around them, but they feel it too. Especially when they go in the, uh, uh, the, the, the snack cabinet and there's no extra snacks in there like it used to be. And, and, and there, there's no extra dollar for the ice cream truck when it rings a fancy bell. There's no extra dollar. And there's no extra money for the latest and greatest new sneakers this season. Teach them as Solomon taught his son that to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heavens. This is just a season, Amen. And this too shall pass. Amen. In these critical times, we as Christians of the Most High God must draw near to God. Number two, hold fast. Hebrews 10, 23 tells us not to let our faith waver. If we dare to put down our shields of faith, the darts and the arrows of misfortune will soon plunge their way into our hearts. Keep ever present the hope that is found in Jesus the Christ. Jesus himself said in John the 16th chapter, 33rd verse, these things have I spoken to you that it means ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. How many of you right here, right now, and even you watching, know this is just a test? Amen? We have tests throughout our whole lives. Tests in school. Had to take a test to get your driver's license. When I wanted to get my uh, 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 food service, food service, say, had to take a test. When I joined the military, test. AIT, test. Life is full of tests. You have been tested before, and I know you recognize the signs. Maybe God is trying to tell us something. Amen? Maybe God is trying to show us something through all of this. It might feel like we're at the end of our rope, and God does not see our dilemma. Well, my mama used to say, rest your soul. Son, when you reach the end of your rope, tie it now and hold on tight and don't ever let go. Our faith gets tested and sooner or later we have to determine just what it is that we have been, have been in and what we believe in and then hold on for dear life. And wait on God. I stop by to tell you, he may not come when you want him to, but he's never, ever late. And he's always on time. Number three, stick together. This is key during this time. Stick together. Hebrews the 10th, chapter 24 and 25, reminds us to pay attention to each other and stay close together. The truth is we need each other. Amen. I need you and I pray y'all need me. We need each other. We need to stick together. God did not create us just as individuals. He also created us to work together. Ephesians says that some of you are the head and some are the arms and some are the legs. Some are fingers and some are eyes. Some is just a nose. Amen. But all those parts, together, we form the body of Jesus to Christ. Amen. 
The Apostle Paul loved to use the phrase one another. Be kindly affectionate one to another. You'll find that in Romans 12 and 10. Able also to admonish one another. Romans 15, 14. By love serve one another. Galatians 5, 13. Be ye kind one to another. Ephesians 4, 32. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Colossians 3, 13. And Jesus says, and told us to love one another as I have loved you. John 15 and 12. You see, from these scriptures, we get the clear picture that life was never meant to be lived alone. Those who have lived through difficult times before have heard the expression, their strength in numbers. Now we know that it's biblical. Surviving a critical time means that we will have to pay close attention to one another. All the more in times like this. In seasons like this, it's good to check on that neighbor you don't know so well or haven't seen in a while. In seasons like this, it's good to reach out to those who are suffering more than we are. In seasons like this, it's time to be a help and not a hindrance. And I can say this about First Baptist West. We came when a call was given, when the M28 ministry needed help. We lived up to the model of this church, love God, love people, see lives changed. And people were giving stuff, and I was uh, so uh, warmed up in my heart and giving and, and coming and helping and giving out. And we, we, I don't know about other churches throughout the world, but I know for this church, when the call came, you give. Even when people don't know what you're doing, you're giving and you're helping. Amen? It reminds me of a Shusmite woman during a great famine. Y'all might know the story. The prophet Elijah came to her home, starving and asked her for something to eat. Even though she only had enough flour and oil for one more meal for her and her son. And after that, they were get ready to prepare to die. She fixed it for him anyway. And the scripture says that they did eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not. First Kings 17, 15, and 16. How many of you here and how many of you watching know that your barrel will never run out? If you believe in Jesus, your barrel will never run out. This is not the time to cower in a corner like sick men and women, little boys and little girl waiting to die. It's time now to draw near to God. It's time to hold fast to your faith. Amen? In such a time as this, it's time to stick together all the more. Every year, every year, but I don't know about this year. Some of you might know, but I don't know about this year. Boston has a world-famous marathon. Thousands of men and women train for that marathon, some with the hope of winning the race, but most with the hope of just finishing the race. They go through rigorous training and exercise. They eat a special diet. They get plenty of rest. All of this in preparation for the tough race ahead. As Christians of the Most High God, that's what we've been doing since the day we got saved. We've been feeding our spiritual man and woman a special diet, exercising our faith, training our hearts to listen to God and respond to his word. And all of it was preparation for a tough race. This is it, church. This is it. For many of us, it may be the big one. I'm not talking about death. I'm talking about big challenge. This may be the biggest race of our faith we'll ever have to run. For some, this might be the big one. But remember, it's not about winning. 
In the natural, you want to win the race. But this one's not about winning. It's about finishing. Amen? Paul said, we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God, of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.14. And we finish the race with patience, enduring to the end. Now, isn't that what Jesus did? He not only finished, but he finished strong. He accepted the shame and the ridicule of the cross after it was nothing. And all because of the joy that God put before him. Hebrews 12 and 2. He focused on the prize rather than the pain. And that's what we should be doing. Through all what's going on, let us focus on the prize rather than the pain. In critical times, like we're in right now, we need to focus on the feast that lies ahead. Right here, right now, just over the horizon, all these critical challenges in our lives, there's a table spread before us. Now, let me walk to my clothes and tell you God is saying, lift up your eyes from above the mess down here. And look up. Stay focused and keep the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart acceptable unto me. Look up, church, to where your strength comes from. Look up, my brothers and sisters, to where your salvation comes from. Look up to where your blessings come from. Look up. Look up to where your hope comes from. Look up to where your peace comes from. Look up, and if you look up, there you'll see at the head of the table, Jesus the Christ, who will one day say, all things are ready, all things are ready, come to the feast. You'll find that in Luke 14 and 17. All things are ready, Come to the feast. Come for the tables now spread, church. Ye famine, ye weary. Come, come all, thou shalt be richly fed. Hear this invitation from Jesus the Christ. Come whosoever will. Come, praise God for full salvation. For whosoever will. So all you got to do this morning is hold on just a little while longer. Hold on, hold on just a little while longer. I stop by to tell you that no matter what you're going through, uh, God has got a blessing for you. No matter what the pandemic is, uh, God has a blessing for you. No matter the civil unrest, God has a blessing. No matter the lack of job or the lack of food, God has a blessing. So all you got to do this morning Hold on to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Look to the hills, my brothers. Look to the hills, my sisters. For all your help is coming from the Lord. May God bless you and may he keep you. This is my prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, you be the God of all creation. I thank you for this time and this hour and bless these your people one by one and name by name and that something might be said Father God to give hope to these trying times oh God to give us a way Father God to trust in you all the more and Father God we love you we bless you and and we believe in you oh God now may the grace of God sweet communion of his Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide us now, his forth and forevermore. This is my prayer in Christ's holy name. Amen.